I had this idea to walk backwards every day for 40 days in a row here in July, August, and a little bit of September 2024. I used to walk backwards almost every single day since the pandemic for several years. And what's going to happen is every single day, I'm going to record my thoughts and feelings that's going on for me in real time about the creative process or whatever else comes up for these 40 days. And you're going to hear, you know, maybe five to seven minutes per day of the best of recorded during that live walking backwards for about a quarter to a half of a mile per day. And it's in real time. So I'm really walking backwards backwards as I'm talking with you outside. So enjoy the whole episode and uh, here we go. Okay, today is day two and it's a Sunday. It is July 28th, 2024 and we're walking backwards six 40 or whatever, it's kind of busy. On the way here, I uh, noticed I'm feeling the sun on my face. It feels so good. I can actually close my eyes just for a moment. And it just feels good because it's so gentle, the warmth. And I gaze out of my eyes and I see the hills, Santa Monica Hills, Hollywood Hills. On the way here, I heard some crows and saw them on the street on Doheny. And there are so many reports out now that Crows are highly intelligent, and if you feed them, they will bring back bright, shiny things as to say thank you, etc. You know, that, those kind of things, and just their intelligent levels. And they're something about a memory where they can come back and pick something up and drop it off. And maybe they're even reflective, which then takes me to working with, as some people do, power animals, spirit animals. And one can work with them on a one-off basis, meaning that, oh, if you notice a lot of rabbits or if you notice a lot of squirrels all of a sudden, what that might mean. So yeah, always looking and listening for ways of seeing things in new ways, let's say it that way. Or putting forth a question or postulating something and seeing how the universe gives me feedback. Because feedback it will give. Just now I had a gentleman pass me running in all black and he's uh, running on the sidewalk going forward. But with such a determination, with such a forcefulness, such rigidity in his body, it's it's disturbing to see it. I feel that's like a, a way that he most likely shows up in his day-to-day life. You know, determined, stressed, rigid not a very fun way to go through life so power animals let's get back to power animals one way of working with power animals is to have a sense of what power animal or spirit animal you are showing up as in your day-to-day life if you were a power animal in your day-to-day life presently what would that be and then going the other direction which is when i am in alignment or living or tasting or being my full self or my ideal self, what power animal would that be? And to notice the difference and to see how it's similar, how it's not. One of the noticings is to see if it's the same kind of animal, meaning a four-legged animal that walks the earth, a winged animal that flies, or a finned animal that swims. When you work with power animals in this way, there's quite a difference between an animal that navigates the water like a whale or a dolphin or stingray or as opposed to one that travels on the ground predominantly or travels in trees predominantly you know the bear the giraffe or one that flies the sparrow the eagle the bluebird and noticing and appreciating the way in which they cross the earth plane is uh, significant one being earth one being water one being air one being of something that's earth supported earth traversed earthly one is water element which is have more movement more fluidity more murky and of course air element which has superpowers of going across the world with a lot less resilience or resistance i should say a lot less resistance a lot less resistance wind element or air element can offer resistance but if you think about how fast something can go air has the least amount of resistance earth 
has and water has the most in terms of just speed. But if you want to travel to different dimensions, then water and air have that ability. Earth element, if you want to go down or up, it's very time consuming, very expensive, takes a lot of plotting. The other thing I've been thinking about is this element of performance over being witnessed. Performance and being witnessed. And as I walk today, if I think of this as a performance, then a certain amount of my energy is in my awareness, my self-awareness, maybe even self-consciousness around how I'm doing, because I'm in performance. And there's something about being in performance that has already drawn a line between myself and the experience, because I'm in a performance. If I take the perspective that I'm being witnessed, then more of my attention goes towards the moment as opposed to the result. Performance is a result, inherently. It's a performance, so then you're going to measure the performance. But if I'm being witnessed, I'm being witnessed, and then that becomes emotionally true for me, not just words, but I'm emotionally present with this thing of being witnessed. It feels more spacious. It feels more free, less less potential judgment. And as I being witnessed feels like there's no need for it to go a certain way. This is what's happening as opposed to a performance. I can feel into how this would work wonderfully for a narrative based work especially for anything that's filmed or recorded, for sure. And there was something that was prized, which was a certain kind of performance energy, especially on stage, live performances with an audience. And I feel like with the changes in our culture and our appetite for certain kinds of media, that what's happening now is the art of being witnessed and allowing someone allowing the camera, allowing the recording device to witness you. And that's a very different experience. And being witnessed is effortless. Like when you watch children playing, you're witnessing their play. I'm witnessing their play. They're deeply involved in it. Now, there could be times when they perform for you, perform like a routine, like something they've done before and they're repeating it. But just the sheer act of witnessing something. In performance, there's always this pressure of time and entertainment and something that has been rehearsed or worked on towards the element of perfection, of getting it right. And just allowing myself to be witnessed, that's a very powerful place to be. Okay, it's day three, Monday, July, July 29th. So <laughs> I've already had quite an eye-opening experience this morning. And that is, you know, we often talk about how important it is to be relaxed and open and available and present. So as I was coming to this place where I walked backwards, I was crossing a busy street. And as I was crossing the busy street, there was a space of no traffic and it wasn't at a crosswalk. So I quickly got off the sidewalk, crossed the street, off the curb, crossed the street and then went to the other side. And what I noticed was that my usual foot that I favored was on both ways, both going down and going across and going back up. I favored my right foot, which is if I was walking unconsciously without awareness, that's how I would walk. So as much as I've over the last few weeks when I've been walking in a slower conscious way balancing out or choosing the side of the, the right leg or the left leg that I wanted to go down the step or up the step all of that went out the window when I went to an automatic space of getting across the street as quickly as possible without getting hit by a car and that's the microcosm that we're working on so that when you go for an audition, when you go for a performance, when you're doing something that's risk-taking, that taps into that survival mode where the field of perception narrows, we have the possibility, at least, of keeping the field of perception open and wide and not going for the rote 
predictable behavior, action, choice. So that was my reminder this morning, even before I started walking backwards. I was also noticing this morning how quickly, when my alarm went off, how quickly it was to say, well, you know, you woke up, that part's done, you can go back to bed now, not a problem. And you know, does it really make a difference if you do it first thing in the morning or mid morning? Not really. And how automatic that was. Again, nothing to do with me as such. It's just a thought that happens. So I've been walking backwards on this street since the beginning of the pandemic. And not once have I ever passed this one particular building that's five stories tall and has balconies for every unit, every apartment. Not once have I ever seen someone on the balcony. And there's another building that's six stories tall, equal amounts of balconies. And I've seen one person smoking a cigarette one night. And it's one of those things where we say we want something, we enjoy it when we look at it, like maybe like buying a convertible or absolutely must having a, a sunroof or a moonroof for our car. And then we get it in maybe the first couple of days we work with it, use it, experience it. And then we don't work with it, see it, use it, enjoy it. Even though it was at least in part, part of our thing, our list of things that we said we wanted. What else have I said I wanted, thought that I would want, that would be non-negotiable, but in reality, I don't appreciate, I don't use, I don't, what else? What else is like that in my life? What else is like that in your life? I don't have the experience of buying a house with a pool. I have a feeling though, that that could also be like that, where you buy a house with a pool and then except for the super hot summer days and you don't have kids, that it too could also pass by without ever being really seen or worked with or used. And the same thing with clothes and the same thing with kitchen appliances and the same thing with certain kinds of electronic gear that people say they will work with or say they want but they never work with or like a camera or a recording equipment or a gimbal special tennis shoes just to wrap this in a little more this is always about people always about characters always about narrative always about creating works of art that touch deeply or cut deeply into our lives so for instance if i'm writing a character in a narrative and they live in a house and they never use their pool no one ever notices something in the pool for weeks because no one uses it or it speaks to a thing of someone buying a house under you know during a different period in their life when they had a different kind of relationship all of that comes in and all of that is based on this thing of being more present and being more available but only every moment and the other thing i want to talk about is a thing called distillation. To distill something is significant. Distillation is definitely an aspect of alchemy in terms of the concentration. The concentration is what makes it so powerful, so potent. And our ability to concentrate on a singular thing for a long period of time and to have some form of extraction process is huge. And it's the distillation process that makes alcohol alcohol or alcohol more powerful or more potent than other alcohols. Same thing with essential oils. Same thing with... Those are the two things that I can think of right now that go through a very specific kind of distillation process that creates more potency. Other things I could think of that have concentration levels are merely non-diluted and non-diluted is very different than distillation so tomorrow we speak about distillation okay good morning today's tuesday july 30th 2024 it's day number four and it's another beautiful day here in southern california and uh another beautiful start to another beautiful day and getting more and more into perception today the first thing i perceived is the eucalyptus trees in terms of that beautiful aromatic leaf bark that happens especially at sunset and sunrise they seem to release a little more aroma so this element of 
having the future reveal itself is so fascinating to experience it in real time every day by walking backwards so just to be clear again i'm not doing this from uh exclusively from a place of like oh i want to tighten up my glutes or oh i get to work with different muscles that aren't normally worked with when walking forward etc the primary interest the primary way i started was this idea of perception and how when i walk towards my future i get to perceive it in the moment in real time and that's uh continues to be very very fascinating and i'm experiencing it right now it's such a gift my hope is that you might try it on one day it does take a little bit of time though just so you know it does take a little bit of time in the sense of working through all the mechanical things of you know figuring out how to walk backwards and finding a place where you can do it safely and trusting yourself and all that good stuff so yesterday we were talking about distillation to distill something it takes a lot to go through a distillation process and i haven't had the experience of actually doing it myself i've watched it i've seen the setups for it i've I've just never done it myself but it does take time and it does take patience and the result of it depending upon what you're working on also comes through just these little tiny drops and those drops add up to whatever it is you're distilling and in that distillation process it becomes much more powerful and potent you're taking away everything that is not essential to whatever it is that you're looking to harvest and in that process you're also giving it a stability and a shelf life that goes beyond something that's just fresh which is similar in some ways to fermentation different but similar in the sense that you're making something that's fresh that could last a short period of time into something that could last a very long period of time and you know have more potency and when you're working on yourself or you're working on long-term projects and i have the feeling that working on yourself is the ultimate long-term project that the more you stay with it the more heat and heat by the way is used in the distillation process and heat is used in the alchemical process and heat is used in cooking and heat which is connected to the fire element is always going to be present in any alchemical process any creative process and it can be towards your benefit and it can be towards your demise create something more powerful it can also kill it it can also be burned and i'm looking up at these beautiful eucalyptus trees and that's one of their challenges in a city that i can see how they would burn very quickly and eucalyptus oil is just phenomenal phenomenal healing properties amazing aroma so that distillation process using heat for the right amount of heat at the right time is a crucial part of that and it can really help you along the way as well in terms of finding the essence finding the element of that was essential to whatever it is that you're working on and taking away everything that's not which is in essence the editing process and i also feel it goes in a little deeper into being able to take away things that you can communicate without necessarily necessarily having the entirety of it so what i mean by that is if i want to communicate about a rose i could get rose the essence of rose the tincture of rose the i could get the essential oil of rose and it would be just tiny it would be the smallest little dab on my forearm and i could inhale that rose and in that i could trigger inside of me all the thoughts and feelings of all the rose experiences experiences i've ever had so i don't need to have the three dozen red roses that someone sent me i don't need to have the time that i had a corsage at my junior senior prom i don't need to have the time i went to someone's funeral i don't need to have the the walk i took with my mother through a rose garden i don't need to have all those cascading
interesting thoughts and feelings and events that comes up purely with just one inhale of rose. And it's the same thing in our narratives. It's the same thing in our stories. It's the same thing in our scenes. It's the same thing in our poems. And that is what we are hoping as artists, what I'm hoping as an artist, to distill, to get to the essence of. As I take another really long, deep inhale of eucalyptus. Today, I'm having a real experience of how much noise there is, ambient noise, from even though I'm not on a major street, the major street that I'm close to. I can really hear it more today than ever. So I may consider walking a different street for us tomorrow. We'll we'll play it back and see what it sounds like. The distillation. Also in the word distillation is the word still, stillness. And distillation does take time and patience. And I have to be patient now for tomorrow until we have another chat. And another chat we will have.